That was the silliest introduction I've ever had on this stage. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Tamar Baskind, and I will be speaking to you tonight about flighting, which is dueling with words. And I want to start with a story that involves these guys. King James IV of Scotland, uh, shown here with Mary Guys, hosted a duel between two poets. So we have a duel of words, no swords or guns, just words. And these two poets, William Dunbar and Walter Kennedy, came and dueled in front of the king uh, in the early 16th century. Um, so some duels are to the death, as Trey was mentioning. Others are to first blood. Still others are to the pain. <laughs> and this, uh, this was a poet's duel, so it was done with poetry. And this form of dueling, um, here you have two medieval bards with hurdy-gurdies, apparently. <laughs> this form of dueling is called flighting. Um, people engage in flighting, and uh, perhaps one of the earliest examples that we have in English is included in the epic poem of uh, Beowulf, and what you have here is a modern artist rendition um, from 1915. The poem itself dates probably to around 1000, um, and in this poem we have our hero Beowulf who engages um, Unferth, another guy, in a, in a duel of words in flighting. So I'll come back to Beowulf, but I want to give a little bit of context. And we all know that humans like to boast. We like to make ourselves feel important. We've all done it at some point. It makes us feel big and bad. Um, now, at some point in our evolution, probably a long, long time ago, people realize that they can make themselves feel even bigger if they make the other side feel smaller. And it's all in how you use the words, right? I'm the shit versus you're a little shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Not exactly, but OK. So I'll come back to this choice of words a little bit later. But we have here the combination of boasting and insulting. And obviously, we see it everywhere. You don't need an odd salon talk to tell you that. I want to uh, tell you guys about this, this quote from uh, Ward Parks, who wrote about this in his 1990 book about verbal dueling and heroic narrative. He says that man and woman, whatever else he might be, is a rhetorical creature and in many moods, a belligerent one as well. Going back to Thunderdome for a second. <laughs> Rhetoric and belligerence meet in the verbal contest. So we have rhetoric, trying to make an argument, trying to put somebody down. We have belligerence, the boasting, or we can show it in the Venn diagram. When you have boasting and insults and profanity, let me call it, there you go, we have flighting. To put it in a slightly more visual form, we have Monty Python calling your mother a hamster. And so that's, you know, that's kind of putting you down. Um, but because this is in poetry, we, we can't ignore the actual poetic elements. Um, often it rhymed, alliteration, whatever, all these different poetic elements came in. And this form of, of dueling, flighting, has been seen in, in many cultures, in many periods of history. And I'm going to focus on one particular period in history for a bit here, and that's medieval Europe. Um, and in so doing, I'm combining three of my favorite things, medieval studies, literature, and foul language. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Why you, you know, maybe that comes back to the profanity. I'm not sure. I think it's a sword, but those are easily confused. So, back to Beowulf and his flighting with Unferth. As I said, this is mostly boasting um, with Beowulf saying that he's really big and bad and he can do all the things. He does imply that Unferth's men uh, and the king's men are, are no good cowards and that he himself is the only one who can save them from the monster uh, Grendel. And so a little bit of put down going on here. Um, 
This is written in poetry, which I, it's in Old English, so most of us can't read it. Um, but it really, it really adheres to the conventions of, of uh, Anglo-Saxon poetry. I'm going to post later something that I found. Um, I'm going to post it on something weird because I found a modern video rendering the epic poem um, in rap on YouTube because YouTube has everything. It's fabulous. And here's just a still from it. It has upside down face puppets. And that's all you need to know. It's amazing. But it, it does actually tell the story. In the Norse tradition, we have uh, the Eddic poem, The Lay of Hard Barther. I think I'm pronouncing that right, if anybody knows how to pronounce it. Thank you. <laughs> Thor, seen here with the hammer, is arguing with a ferryman, and they are engaged in flighting. Since Thor uses the hammer, I like to think the ferryman won because he actually just used his words, which is what flighting is supposed to be. Um, we also see it, and this is perhaps the best known example. Um, this is, uh, in the picture you see here, uh, Loki flighting with the goddess Freya. Um, basically, Loki uh, crashed the party and uh, insisted to have a seat at the table, and they said no, and he said yes, and they kind of went back and forth. And then... At some point, um, this is where uh, foul language gets, gets codified because in an attempt to placate him, Aegir, who's the, the master of the hall, says to Vidar, another uh, character, is it showing? Yes. Let the wolf father be benched at our banquet, lest that Loki fling lewd words at us in Aegir's ale hall. So this is the first time that we get lewd words actually become a part of flighting in this poem. And yay, lewd words. I told you I liked it. In the early modern period, we have a lot more example, including Shakespeare, whose insults should be their own talk because they're amazing. Um, but I want to talk about one particular early modern flight, and then we'll get back to... Um, King James IV and the flight of Dunbar and Kennedy. Um, I found a picture of Dunbar. Not sure when he was born. I did not find a picture of Kennedy. <laughs> not sure why. This poem was considered, um, or, or rather Dunbar was considered a, a virtuoso of, of this type of, of dueling. And here are just a few lines. Naked capon fed and bred against a bitch's side, and like a mongrel criminal, no man sets aught by you. Cunt, bit, sorry, shit. There it is. Worthless git, hardened hide, wasted weather, tawdry tether, evil adder, I defy you. <laughs> ah, doesn't it, right? It makes you feel, yeah. So this is considered the first time, a uh, surviving uh, example of the word shit used as a personal insult. So saying you shit, which I don't, we all do, goes back here. And again, yay, I love them. So there are many examples of flighting in English in the modern world. I couldn't possibly cover them all and you don't need to, so I'll step way, way ahead. This was in the earliest 16th century. We come back to, uh, we come forward now rather to modern times where we see them in Rap battles, that's what they're about. The put down, the poetry, the rhythm, right? Another one, another one, and poetry slams. Um, these all come out with, uh, with flighting, and I wanna bring it to today, right now, tonight, probably at this very moment on some stage in this country, in Hamilton. <laughs> Anybody here seen Hamilton? There we go, then you know what I'm talking about. Rap battles galore. And uh, this is one of them, is it playing? No, there we go. <laughs> Incorporates dancing too. Um, there's a lot of, th this is an important one because it brings it back, it brings this ancient form of dueling to the modern audiences. And so I've covered a bunch of different examples and talked to you guys about how it developed. And, and so, you know, what, is it, what does it all mean? Um, it means, to me and maybe to you, that profanity, 
especially when coupled with artistry, has merit. It serves a purpose. This is a personal thing of mine, you know this. I cuss a lot. I don't know if you guys can tell. My kids can't tell, but I do. It also means that words have power. And words, especially when they are combined with wit, have power. And so I'd like to raise a toast. The image here, is, guys, is from the Bayou Tapestry, which is a medieval tapestry. Uh, they're all raising a toast. I'd like to point you guys to the fact that even the dogs are raising a toast. <laughs> and here's the toast to using words and wit to fight our battles, and when profanity is fitting, to using that as well. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.